Who are the black judges? What age of strife technology do they still employ during the Great Crusade? And how do the Iron Warriors fare against them? Friends, let's find out and welcome to another 40k video. The first engagement of the Iron Warriors under the direct command of their Primarch was the attack against a foe who would sorely test the Legion's metal and open the campaign to bring the Meritara cluster into Imperial compliance. Taking his newly constituted expeditionary fleet, Perturabu drove straight for the heart of the cluster and the hostile power he knew resided there. On Olympia, the enemy Perturabu sought had been little more than legend, but the last time their shadow had fallen on that world, their coming had led to the slaughter and enslavement of tens of thousands before their demanded tribute was paid. They were the self-styled black judges, self-appointed arbiters of human purity, life and death. Twisted and withered creatures that had once been human in ages past, they had extended their lifespans into millennia with the help of technology as ancient as it was dark. Now their shriveled and time-ravaged bodies were encased in mechanised war machines controlled by cybernetic implants. In order to live, they required regular infusions of fresh human genetic material acquired by an agonisingly fatal extraction process and from their base upon a barren ravine horde moon known as the rock of judgment they held sway over a dozen nearby human inhabited worlds through terror offering a devil's bargain of protection from xenos assault in return for a tribute of the young and healthy the iron warriors reeling from its punishment at its new master's hands was shamed into a desperate desire to prove itself to its primarch and it was to be the black judges that were to suffer its pent-up hatred and wrath. The orbital assault on the Rock of Judgment was a direct and brutal affair, well defended by defence laser batteries and swarms of drone fighter craft and the black judges' own warp-capable battleships. It had withstood marauders and vengeful enemies for millennia, but against the fury of the Iron Warriors it could not prevail smashing through the blockade lines of warships, heedless of the losses they incurred, with a score of Legion strike cruisers and a dozen battle barges burned from stem to stem. The Legion grappled their foe at close quarters, launching crippling boarding actions and barrages of Melser warhead torpedoes at point-blank range. With the line broken, the Legion fleet pushed through, using the arm and pros of their laddish capital ships and the bulwark void shields of siege frigates to weather the storm of ground fire and force a landing. Although their arcane technology carried with it much of the strength of mankind's mastery over the stars, before the Age of Strife, the Black Judges were few in number, even accounting for the tens of thousands of sable-robed accusators and functionaries gene bred to serve them and so relied heavily upon static defences and automated sentry guns for protection spearheaded by land raider phalanxes and shadow sword companies the iron warriors surged forward methodically eliminating all resistance in a storm of energy blasts while behind them came wave after wave of mobile siege guns and artillery whose pulverising shell fire shattered and brought down mountain faces, burying the gun bastions below in choking rubble. Such was the apocalyptic firepower of this rolling advance that it obliterated the black judges' vaunted defences metre by metre, erasing them from existence. It was when the space marines smashed their way into the lightless inner sanctums of the night courts at the heart of the towering citadels of obsidian that the bitterest fighting took place. Swept by batteries of lethal neutron rays and assailed by suicidal mobs of accusators and with powered chain hammers able to split even Legione's Astartes plate, the casualties mounted, but the Legion did not falter. Once the fanatics had been slaughtered, the leading elements of the assault wave forced their way bloodily on through abyssal chambers of nightmarish surgical theatres and abhorrent instruments of the justice these debased oppressors enacted 
to the final confrontation with the black judges themselves. Sustained by their dark sciences, each of the black judges' armoured life support frames were all but imperious to bolt fire, while their razor scourges and ray cannons made each the equal of a legionary's Astartes dreadnought in firepower, and there were hundreds of them. Against these mechanoid killers, the warriors of the legion would not give ground, although the legionaries themselves fell in droves, cut into bloody hunks of meat, or incinerated in the molten coffins of their power armour. The darkness soon became a storm of muzzle, flash and thunder, pierced by the screams of the dying and the high-pitched screeching of diseased minds that had lived far beyond human sanity for centuries. As the battle raged on, the legionaries took to using mounds of their own dead as cover from the sweeping hellish rays and rallied again and again to charge the blackly glittering judgment engines, braving the black judge's murderous fury to plant crack grenades or discharge point blank melter blasts to bring their enemies down. For an age, the battle hovered on a knife's edge. In the confines of the vaults and corridors, the black judges had the advantage, and for every one of them that fell, a dozen more Astartes also fell to pay the price. It was then that Perturabo struck. Having observed the unfolding battle, his superhuman intellect had discerned patterns and vulnerability amid the chaos and din of the war and had calculated the precise point at which to tack to the greatest effort. The Primarch himself struck the ranks of the Black Judges like a thunderbolt throwing them into disarray. Like a vengeful god, he ploughed into the heart of them, blasting and burning them, ripping their machine frames apart and tearing out the withered bodies from within with his own gauntleted hands. As the Black Judges reeled in shock and sought to realign their counterattack against this new and terrible threat, the gears of Pertuarbo's plan turned, and the elite heavy weapons support units of the Iron Warriors, already known by the informal title of the Havocs, advanced in precisely coordinated attack patterns that predicted their foe's response with preternatural accuracy. Isolating and blindsiding the Black Judges, the Havocs advanced inevitably, and ended their baleful rule, pronouncing sentence of their own with crossfire storms of auto shells and plasma bolts. By Perturabo's design, the enemy was crushed without mercy, and their domains were stripped of every valuable resource and technology. Wreckage and weapons flowed to the, the Olympia, and the Black Judges' long-guarded secrets fell also to the newly renamed Iron Warriors and their master, who shared them with the Mechanicum in return for their aid. With the world stripped of its resources, the orbital shipyards of the Rock of Judgment themselves, relics of the lost human age, were finally set in orbit afresh around Olympia and set to work, fashioning a new generation of warships under Perturabo's seal. I realise like those last few moments where he is using their technology, what is there and perhaps designs he can use for his own. That feels like very on character for Perturabo not wasting any resources. And anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll wrap it up there.